How about you? Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 1, two, one and 2. And I'm so thankful for your attendance to God and the things of the Lord. Stand with me for God's word here this morning. And I am got a simple message that I want to preach to you. And that I don't foresee that I'm going to preach too long today. But I just got a, I got a point, one single point that I want to drive home. And um, <clears throat> how many can agree with me that you need the Lord? I mean, can you lift your hands and say, I need the Lord. I need God. I just can't make it without him. And so the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 1, it says, Wherefore seeing, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. That means lay aside the things that are getting you off track. Lay aside the stuff that's getting you derailed. Lay aside the stuff that's messing you up. Lay aside the things that are hindering you. Lay aside the things who are preventing you from being who you need to be. Okay, so it says, lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset you or beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Today I want to preach to you a very simple message on your key to victory. Your key to victory. Let's pray. God, we thank you, Jesus, for your blessings upon us. We thank you, God, that we are your people. God, we're called out. We're the called out assembly. God, we've been bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. But, Lord, help us to live in victory. Help us to live in triumph. Help us to go forth every day knowing that we serve a risen, a resurrected king. We don't serve the kings of the world who are doom and gloom and pain and suffering and death. But we serve a risen Savior, the Prince of Peace, the everlasting God, the wonderful Counselor. And we know that we can put all of our weight on you and we can lean on the everlasting arms of the Lord. And you'll never buckle. You'll, You'll never cave in. And God, we trust in you. We look towards Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. God, help us to run with patience that race that is set before us. Lay aside every weight and sin. God, we thank you for today. Bless us in Jesus' name. You can be seated in God's house. Amen. Your key to victory. Your key to victory. There's one thing I'm going to really harp on this morning, and this will be your key to victory. I want to live in victory. How about you? I want to be victorious. When you look at me as your pastor, I want you to say, that's a victorious man. This man is on the winning side. And when I look at you, I want to be able to say, those are victorious people. How many can lift their hands and say this morning, I've got the victory. I'm standing on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. No matter what floods may come, fires may come, things of the world may come, I am going to say that I'm connected with God and I am embracing the things of God and I've got victory. So many people just do not have victory in their life. And they can't raise their hands along with us this morning and say that they don't have victory. And I don't know, I really wasn't looking. Some of you maybe didn't raise your hand when I asked you if you had victory. And maybe some of you raised your hand and you really didn't have victory. I've been there before in church services where the pastor asks you to do something you really didn't want to do, but you just do it because everybody else is doing it. Maybe that's what just happened. I don't know. Only you know and God knows. But the thing of it is, is do you have the victory? And I'm not saying that to be uh, offensive this morning, but a lot of people just don't. They just don't have the victory. And there's been days where myself, I just didn't have it. I didn't have the victory. I've got it today, and I thank God that I do have it. And every day that I do have the victory and I'm on the winning side, it's not because of anything that I've done. It's because of what God has done. And that's the key that we have to remember. But people have a continual feeling that don't have the victory, that, like they're losing out. You know what it feels like when you lose. That's a bad feeling. People are missing something out. Something is just not missing. And if this is you, if I'm describing you, you need the victory of Jesus Christ in your life. And when I say victory, when I talk about victory, it's not just one of these catchwords that you find in church. What I'm saying is, you've got to win at life. God didn't want you to lose when it comes to life. Instead of losing out in everything, people are losing control, they're losing their bearing, they're losing their north star, they're losing their faith, losing their composure. And I want you, at the end of your day, not just today, but every single day, when you go home and when you lay your head on your pillow, as your pastor, I want you to be able to say that this day was the day that the Lord has made. And not only that, we know that. We know that. But I have had victory in this day. I may have had faults. I may have messed up. But at the end of the day, I want you to be able to say that I am a victorious person in Christ Jesus. A triumph. Now, we know what it feels like 
whenever we win. You don't have to describe the feeling to anybody whenever you win. You know what it feels like, and you know what it feels like when you're not winning. You know exactly what it feels like when you've lost, and that's a feeling that we don't want to feel. But we need to be people who have the victory because so much depends on your victory. Moms and dads and grandparents in here today, your children's victory depends heavily on your victory. Your destiny, your legacy depends on how strong you are and how much a success you are in your walk with God. Now somebody shout amen here today. So today, as I minister to you, I want to offer up to you a recipe for victory or a key for victory. Now this is not something that you'll find in a self-help book. This comes straight from the Word of God. And what I'm trying to tell you today is that the key to victory is let us lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset us. The things that get us on a losing trajectory. The stuff that gets us on a losing path. Because I don't want to be a loser. I don't want you to be a loser. I want you to be a winner in everything that you do for the Lord. Praise God. So lay aside your weights and sins. And if you're looking to win in life, it'll never happen if you are bogged down, if you are cumbered about with weights and sins. Well, what are weights, Pastor? Weights are something that you carry that you just don't need that'll slow you down, that prevent you from being what God wants you to be. Don't carry around unnecessary weight. Let go of the weight that so easily distract you, that so easily deter you. A weight is something that people carry that they just don't need. And one of the things I'm going to talk about here today is the weight of pretending that everything is okay when nothing's okay at all. That's a weight that many people carry, and it's a weight of being fake. It's a weight of a facade. It's a weight of a veneer where we pretend like we are super spiritual when we're not. When we pretend like everything's fine when we're not. When we pretend like we've got everything worked out and everything taken care of. when we're, That is a weight and it is a weight that drags you down. What I'm trying to tell you, we're carrying weights of pretending to be something we're not. I want you to catch this. We are carrying out around weights. It's acting like everything is fine when we are not. And that is the weight of pretending. Are you hearing what I'm saying here this morning? Now, it happens when we are not honest with ourselves. It happens when we are not honest with each other. And it happens when we are not honest with God. We carry the weight of pretending that everything's okay and everything's fine when it's really not fine. When we go through life trying to impress people and let them make them think that I've got everything under control when deep down in our hearts we don't have nothing under control. That's a weight. Trying to, uh, instead of being real, we put on a pretense that says, I'm not going to express my real feelings. I'm not going to express what's really going on inside of my heart. I'm just going to put up a a show. I'm just going to pretend. And uh, after a while, putting on a pretense gets really heavy. Living something that you're not gets really heavy after a while. And I would submit to you, and listen to this, I would submit to you today that many people live in defeat simply because they refuse to admit that they need help. I'll be the first one in line to tell you today that I need God. I am a needy individual. I cannot make it without God. I will be the first one to tell you there are many days that I wake up and I say, God, I don't know how I'm going to make it today. There are days that I just don't feel it. There are days where you wake up and you just don't feel it like you did the day before. And those are the days where you can't go on and say and pretend and put on a show and put on a veneer or a facade and say, God, I'm going to try to strong arm it. No, those are the days where you've got to say, God, I need you more today than I did yesterday. Don't worry the, carry the weight of being false or being fake or pretending that things are good when they're not good. Don't carry the weight of pretending everything's fine. But the scripture says, look at what the scripture says. It says that God's power shows up in our weaknesses. When we are able to admit that we are not as strong as what we think we are, that's when God's power shows up. 
This is what Jesus said. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. If we go around pretending like we don't have any weaknesses, like nothing bothers us, then God's power is not able to be utilized in our life and we'll never have true victory. God will not bless who you pretend to be. Are you hearing what I'm saying in the church this morning? God will not give you victory that we and you and I so desperately need if we claim God I've already got it and I don't need it oh that's a dangerous place to be oh I need the Lord here this morning how about you but when you're man enough and woman enough to admit that I need God and I really don't have it all together and some days we look at ourselves and we look like we got it all polished and taken care of. We look deluxe. But there are other days where we just don't got it together. And we say, God, these are the days that I need you. When you say, I'm struggling in this area. Some of you, you're still struggling with things. And you're trying to put on a facade like you're not. I'm going to tell you what you need to do. You need to get it out in the open and say, God, I'm still struggling and I need your help. Because there are chains that you cannot break on your own. There are things that sins and weights that you cannot pluck off of yourself and cast away on your own. It's got to be given to the Lord. And I'll tell you, i got to give you a guarantee here today. If you give it to God, God will handle it. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise here this morning in God's house. Lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset you. The weight of pretending. The weight of being uh, pretending. When you're big enough to admit that God, I don't got it all together. That's when you start casting off weights. That's when you start breaking chains. That's when things that are on you and on your back that are weighing you down. You are... They, they come off of you. And I want to feel weightless in God. I want to feel free in God. Don't you, to this morning, don't you want to feel free in the Lord? There's an example in the New Testament of somebody who, who was able to say that I'm not all I should be. I'm not all I should be. Is able to be honest with himself. This is Paul. He said in Philippians chapter 3, he said, I count not myself to have apprehended. You know that scripture. You know what it means. Paul's saying, I'll tell you one thing. I haven't made it yet. I'm not all that I should be yet. I count not to, of myself to have apprehended. I haven't got everything that there is to get yet. He's saying, in other words, I'm still not everything that I should be. Paul is saying, I'm still a work in progress. God's still working on me. Like Jeremiah said, I am a piece of clay on the potter's wheel. God is still forming me. God is still shaping me. I'm not... I'm not been put in the kiln yet? I'm not a piece of pottery up on the shelf that's just looking good. No, God still is working on me. Now, Paul, this is the thing about Paul. Paul was one of the greatest preachers that ever walked the face of this earth. He had a lot to be proud of. He wrote more than half of the books in the New Testament. He was a scholar. He was a theologian. He studied at the feet of Gamaliel. He was a prominent man, a smart man, almost a genius man. He spoke, somebody said he spoke almost more than five different languages. I can barely, and some of us, you included, we can barely speak English. <laughs> I mean, all you got to do is listen to me preach for five minutes and you can say, oh, he needs to go back to English class. <laughs> but Paul can speak more than five different languages. He had all this going for him. He was one of the most brilliant men that ever walked the face of this earth for Jesus Christ. But he had enough humility to say, I hadn't made it yet. I still got faults. I still got failures. By the way, I've got a thorn in my flesh. I've been trying to get rid of this thing. I've got a problem. I can't get rid of it. When I think it's gone there, it comes back right back. And he's able to say, I haven't made it yet. Look at what the scripture says. His brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. He says, I'm dropping the weights of pretension. I'm dropping the weights of fakeness. I'm dropping the fake weight. I'm dropping the weights of putting on a show. I'm not going to do that anymore. But I'm going to press towards the mark for the of the high calling in Christ Jesus and if you are going to climb up the ladder with God and get to the mountaintop with God and if you're going to soar with the eagles brothers and sisters in the church this morning you have got to lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset you you can't, I can't go around pretending like everything is good and everything's perfect and everything's well when it really isn't God cannot help you if you pretend like everything's good 
we got to say, God, I need you here. I messed up here. God, I wish I would have done better. God, I'm sorry for the mistake I've made. And I'll tell you, whenever you utter those words to the Lord and you admit your failures to God, it is an, it's like a, a new door, a new life is open, and you can walk into a freedom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Don't let the way to pretend and everything's fine cause you to lose your victory. It's okay to say I'm not there yet. That I'm struggling with these issues. And if you're not honest, you'll stop growing. It's only when you empty yourself out that God can fill you up. Did you hear that? But God cannot fill a vessel that's already full. If we're full of our own pride. If we're full of our own successes. Our own victory. God can't give us His victory. The Bible says to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And He will exalt you in due time. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And He, God, shall lift you up. Last week I talked about... Uh, at the end of the service, I talked about a, a, a father and a son. Some of you left early and you didn't get to hear it, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you um, again. There was a father, he, he, he knew real quick that if I'm going to get help with myself, and if I'm going to get help for my son, I've got to be honest. I've got to define reality. He said, my son went to the disciples. He said, my son's got a devil, got a spirit, a deaf or dumb spirit. And this spirit's been on him since he was a child. And he says, uh, the spirit that's in this boy, this, this possession, has tried to put this child in the fire, tried to put this child in the waters to drown him and kill him. And what he says, he went to the disciples, help me, help me. And the disciples said real quick, this is out of our league. We can't do this. This is something that we can't handle. So then he went to Jesus. And Jesus said, how much longer shall I suffer with this unfaithful generation? I mean, he was laying it down. Jesus was being honest as well. And so what happened, the father said, if you can do anything, help me. Help my son. And the Bible says he cried out. The father cried out in tears. In tears. And he says, help me. Help me. And Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. And now this is the point here I'm trying to make. The man looked to Jesus and he says, I believe, but I need help believing. Sometimes my faith is not as strong as it ought to be. I believe you, Jesus, but I need help believing at times. We all need help believing at times. It's easy to believe when everything's good and everything's fine and everything's well. But it's tough to believe when everything's going the wrong ways and it's crooked and sideways. And Jesus said, I'll help you believe. And then he spoke to that dumb and deaf spirit. He says, come out of him and go into him no longer. And the Bible says that that spirit rent the child. Rent the child. And the child fell to the ground. And everybody around looked and said he was dead. But Jesus went to him and said, no, he's not dead. And he picked him up by the hand and he arose. All that was possible because a father was able to accept reality and say that I need help. Now he could have went around the rest of his life and said, my son doesn't have a problem. We don't have a problem. We're not like everybody else. We're better than everybody else. We don't suffer problems that everybody else has to deal with. We're different than everybody else. God loves me different. No, but he was able to define reality and say, I've got an issue. I've got a problem, and I've tried to go to there, and I tried to go to them, and they couldn't help. But I'm going to God with it. And you know what God did? God solved the equation. God solved the problem. You and I will never get what we need trying to cover up our problems, trying to disclose our problems to no one. But we got to give it to the Lord and hand it over to God. Say amen, church. There was a man also in the Old Testament named Gideon. In that time, the Midianites were, were ravishing the people of Israel, the Israelites. For seven years, the Bible says, Judges chapter 6, for seven years, the Midianites were wreaking havoc on the children of Israel. The Bible even says that God's people were having to hide in mountains, hide in caves, having to hide from the enemy. And they prayed and said, God, you're going to have to help us here. And God sent a prophet and said, what you got to do is turn away from your wicked ways. And so then God sent an angel of the Lord to a young man named Gideon. Gideon was threshing wheat by the wine press. That's not where you thresh wheat. He was hiding by the wine press. And this angel of the Lord said, you're a mighty man of valor, Gideon. And Gideon looked at him and said, you're crazy. What are you talking about? What do you mean I'm going to save Israel? What do you mean? Don't, don't you see that I'm hiding? See, Gideon was honest with himself and he was honest with God. And the angel said, you're a mighty man of valor. And he says, no, I'm not. I'm poor. I don't matter. My family is the least in Manasseh. And I'm the least in my family. He says, I'm, I'm the least of the least. I'm the runt of the litter. If anybody's going to do anything, it's not going to be me. That's what Gideon said. 
But this is what the Lord said. The Lord said, don't worry about that stuff. I'm going to go with you. And that's what happened. That's what happened. God went with him. There's power in admitting our faults. There is power in admitting our limitations. There is power in admitting our handicaps. There are so many things that I cannot do. There are so many things, church, that I am just so limited in doing. And if we, you and I, are honest with ourselves this morning, we'll say, oh yeah, I got limitations as well. But for every deficiency that I have, I think God makes up and fills in the cracks and God fills in the gaps. Because I tell you, church, I can't even walk without him holding my hand. Oh yeah, I can't even walk without him holding my hand because the valley's too wide and the river's too deep and the mountain's too high. I just can't do it. Oh God, help us to be like Paul who says, I haven't made it yet. God, help us to be like Gideon who says, I'm not who you think I am, God, but I'll go for you anyways as long as you go with me. Oh Lord. Remember David on the battlefield, he says, I don't come to you with a sling or a rock. I come to you in the name of the Lord. You come against me with a sword and shield, but I've got God on my side. I'm the run of the litter. I'm the least of the least, but I've got God with me. And whenever you're honest with God, the giants in your life will fall. If you trust in God because the battle has never been yours, it is the Lord's. And you've got to turn it all over to God anyways. Hallelujah. Don't hang on to the weight of thinking that you have to put on a show of faith. I grew up around people that are super spiritual. Man, I, that's one thing I can't stand is people who look like, act like, talk like they're super spiritual. Pretend, pretending, pretending. They are pretenders. Pretending like they never have a hardship. Pretending like they never struggle. You and I struggle. You and I deal with things that bother us, frustrate us, aggravate us, get on our nerves, set us on edge. And the very moment that we think that we don't have a problem, you got a problem. The very moment that you think none of this stuff bothers me, you better watch out. Humble yourself. God, I need your help. Help me with this. God, help me with this. I wish, don't you wish that you were perfect? I mean, really. I wish I was perfect. God, make me perfect. That's what Jesus said. He said, be you therefore perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. I'm trying, Lord. I'm trying, but I still fight battles every day. You still fight troubles every day. There's problems that come up every day. But that's why you've got to trust in the Lord with all thy might. Don't lean to your own understanding. Put it in God's hands and things will work out. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Sometimes we think that we have to be a super faith man. The scripture says, let the weak say, I am strong. And that's true. We ought to proclaim a sense of confidence that we have in God. But God not one time told us to override reality and help and tell us to say, oh, it's perfect when, when nothing really is perfect. It doesn't say that you should never feel weak or you should never feel discouraged. There are times that we have got to get right with God and say, get it right with, get real with God and say, God, I feel weak today. God, I'm concerned about things. I'm bothered by things. And I don't see how things could work out. And I need your help to help me. The Bible says if we do sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. You've got a God who's with you. You're on the side of the Lord. Anytime you face a battle or a problem or a sin or a weight or a struggle, you just call to Jesus and say, Jesus, I need your help right now. And the presence of God will show up quick. There's no shame in admitting That you have problems and faults? That's just being honest before God. And that's God. all God's looking for. That's trust in God. And you'll find out when you're honest before the Lord. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And he'll be with you until the end of the world. You know a child has no issue admitting that they need help. Take a little child. They have no problem admitting that they need help. Matthew 18, 3 and 4. Jesus says, Verily I say unto you, Except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. A child has no trouble saying, I need help. My little girls come to me all the time 
want me to fix stuff, need my help. They don't have no problem with it. And you know what? As a dad, when my kids tell me, Dad, can you help me with this? Can you fix this? Can you, can you make this? Or can you do something? You know what it makes me feel like? It makes me feel like a million dollars because my child has enough faith in me that I can fix what they've got broken. I can fix what they've messed up. And they said, I need help. That makes me feel great. And that's the same way it does with the Lord. When we come to Him and say, God, I need your help here. I've messed up. I've broken it. I wish I would have done better. You know how that makes God feel? I believe that warms the heart of God whenever we come to Him and say, God, I need your help right here. I know that I've made a mess of things. I've tried to fix it myself. But God, I need your help. I was with my, my, uh, my, my oldest daughter, Caroline. We were hanging some ceiling fans. And uh, I... I believe you ought to teach your kids to do stuff. If I know how to do something, I'm going to teach my kids how to do it. And I told her, I said, take that one down. <laughs> and she said, how did I do it? I said, you'll figure it out. <laughs> and uh, she did. She figured it out. But there was a point there. She was trying to get the, the little bolts off of it so it would come down. And don't think that I'm a terrible dad. I was watching her. I was with her the whole time. She wasn't going to get electrocuted or nothing. But I was, t I was just watching her. She's struggling, struggling, struggling. And that's one thing about my children. They don't give up. There's a spirit of giving up nowadays. <laughs> Teach your children not to give up. And I told her, I said, just keep working it. Just keep working at it. You'll get it. And I told her, if you need help, just ask. If you need help, just ask. Now, children, small children, they'll ask for help. But when you, they start getting older, they want to do everything on their own. And that spirit, and there's a spirit there. It continues into the heart of adults that I can do it. I don't need any help. I'm going to prove myself. I'm going to be the big one here. I'll be able to take this thing and I'll be able to fix it. See, every, every one of us have a tinge of that, that we think that if we don't do it, then there's, there's, there's a weakness there. But she was up there on the ladder. She's trying to fix that thing. And I told her, I said, Caroline, if you need help, just ask. That's all you got to do. Just ask. And she finally said, she said, can you help me? <laughs> and I said, let me show you. Let me show you. And I went up there and it just, that's it. But the, thing, the point I'm trying to make, church, we have to get to a point where we all realize, and this is the heartbeat of this message this morning, that there are some things that you cannot do on your own. Just cannot do it. And that's when you have to be strong enough. Listen to my words. You have to be strong enough to ask God and say, God, I need your help. There's a crazy, messed up mentality that says only the weak people ask for help. The strongest people I've ever known, those were the ones who said, I don't know how to do that. Can you help me? You know, that's a very powerful thing that you can say. And it shows that you have true confidence whenever you can say, I don't know. Help me to understand. I don't know how to deal with it. Help me to fix it. That shows confidence. That shows confidence not only in you, but that shows confidence in God. Spiritually speaking, there are so many things that we deal with. You have got to learn, God, I can't do it on my own. And I need your help here. Amen. Today, I would like to ask us to let go of that weight that says, I've got to do it all myself. That's a weight that's bogging you down. That's a weight that's bogging you down. I would ask you to lay aside the weight that says, I got to show them how strong I am. I've got to prove to them who I am and how much I can do. No, you don't. You don't have to prove yourself to anybody. The only person's opinion that ever matters in your life is God's. That's all that matters. There's no weakness in saying, God, I need help. There's no weakness in saying, I need help. Some people think it's a weakness to admit your faults, but it takes a mighty strong person to admit their deficiencies. Look at Moses. God called Moses on the backside of the desert out of a burning bush and told Moses, I'm going to, you're, you're going to uh, rescue my people. And Moses says, I can't do it. I can't even talk right. Moses said, I can't talk right. He says, I'm not eloquent enough. He's saying basically, I can think fast, but my mouth don't match my mind. And whenever I try to talk, it just don't come out right. Let me show you this scripture. Moses said unto the Lord, O Lord, I'm not eloquent, neither therefore, neither hereto, nor since. Thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I'm slow of speech. He's admitting his faults. Some people give Moses a hard time thinking these excuses. I mean, I just see that he's being real. I just see, he's, he's saying, God, I, I mean, I want to do these things for you, but I'm not the person. I'm not capable to do these things. Isn't there somebody else who can do these things better than me? I can't even talk right, and you want me to be a spokesman? 
Listen to what he says. I'm slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Now this is the key. Right after Moses says, I can't do it. God says to Moses, Who made your mouth? Or who makes the dumb or the deaf or the sing or the blind? Have not I the Lord? God's saying, what are you worried about? I appreciate you telling me your deficiencies and your, your handicaps and your limitations. But I made your mouth. I can fix your mouth and I'll be with you. He says, now therefore go and I will be with thy mouth. What that means is, is whatever limitation you have or you think you have, God's going to be right there with it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He says, I'll teach you what to say. And only after he admitted it, that's when God helped him. And that's when God worked it out. There's a lot of power in admitting your faults. Let me show you how powerful it is. Did you know that you can have everlasting life if you admit your faults? Did you know that? That you can live forever if you admit your sins, admit your faults. You cast away your sins. The scripture says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. If only we could get to the place, if only that we could get to the place that we can lay aside our pride and, and diminish our pride and say, God, I've messed up here. I sinned. I was wrong. Those are some of the hardest words to ever utter. I was wrong. Let me tell you, you utter those words to God and you utter those words to your brothers and sisters. There's true freedom in that. There's true freedom in that. So often we think we have to hide our struggles and we can't let God know the fears of our hearts. But you can't overcome a weakness unless you give it to God. Covered up wounds don't heal. You get a cut on your finger, you can put a band-aid on it for a little bit to stop the bleeding. But if you keep that band-aid on it forever, it'll never, never heal. Never heal. Sometimes you got to expose it. Open it up. Tell it to God. When you're honest with yourself and honest with God and say, God, help me. That's the first step in getting better. In order to get well, we got to get real with God. We don't serve, I mean, church, we don't serve a fake God. We don't serve a fairy tale God. We serve a God who's with you in every aspect of your life. And he wants to see you calling on him. God knows everything about you anyway. Do you know that? And there's a freedom that you gain when you can come to God and open and confess knowing that he doesn't condemn you. When you come to God, he's not going to say you are pathetic. You should have been stronger there. You should have been better there. No, he's going to open his arms and say, thank you for coming to me. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. I'll give you rest. God doesn't find fault. He has mercy for every mistake, grace for every weakness, and faith for every fear. As we're sitting here this morning, I want to do one simple thing. I'm not going to have an altar service, but I want you to do one thing for me, if you will. Bow your heads. If you are sitting in this building this morning, and I'm not looking around. I don't want nobody looking around. If you're sitting in this building, and you could admit one thing. If you could admit this one thing. God, I need you. If you can do that, I want you to slip your hand up. Say, God, I need you. God, I need you. I need you, Jesus. I'm the first one. I'll, I'll be the first one. I've tried it on my own. It don't work. I need you, Jesus. Stand with me, if you will. Heavenly Father, I pray in this place that whoever lifted their hands and said that they need you would understand that that's the first step in getting better is acknowledging that i got a problem, is acknowledging that I've got an issue, I've got an addiction, I've got a... a a hardship, I've got, I've got an impediment, I've got something that's weighing me down, I've got something that's slowing me down, and God this morning all over this building there were people who lifted their hands and said God they need you so I pray God as we exit this building this morning we would leave here with the confidence that we know that you're going to help us God that you're going to meet our every need God that you're going to walk with us and we won't walk alone, we have never walked a mile alone but God you're going to walk with us and I pray as our dear church 
folks come across their problems and their hardships and they come across these things that have hindered them throughout their lives, God, that, that they will know and sense and feel and believe that you are with them and you are walking with them and all things are possible to those who believe. But many of us this morning, God, we're having trouble even believing. And God, we admit it. And we need your help, God. And I pray that you would solidify our faith. That we would be people of victory. People that are overcoming. People who are walking in triumph. Oh, Jesus, we need your help. We need your touch. We need your blessing. I pray, God, that we would have enough faith to move mountains. Oh, Jesus, that we would have enough confidence in you that impossible things become impossible or become possible. And Jesus, I pray for every soul in this building that they would live their life in dependence on you. I'm depending on you, Jesus. Is anybody in here with me on that? I'm depending on you, Jesus. Oh, you know it's, you know it's true, church. You've depended on people all your life and people have let you down. You've depended on stuff. You've depended on governments. You've depended on politics. You've depended on them. They have let you down. Oh, God, but I'm trusting in you. Oh, God, I need you more today than I did yesterday. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Oh, Jesus, I need you. And I pray, God, for our young people as they face the troubles that young people face nowadays, that you'd walk with them and let them know that the way to heaven is the straight and narrow way. It's following after Christ. And, God, we will never get the help that we need in the world, but it only comes through you. I pray for our older folks, the problems that they face, our adults, what they face. Let us know, God, let it be concrete and solid in our hearts that we need you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we need you. And so today, church, I want to ask you one more time. Lift up your hands and praise the Lord. God, I need you, Jesus. I need you. Just offer up a, a wave offering, a sacrifice of praise. Oh, Jesus, I need you, Lord. I need you, God. I pray today, church, I pray for you that as we lift up our hands and our souls to God, that weights would fall off of you, that shackles would fall off of you. God, I need you in my family. God, I need you as I deal with everything that I deal with. Oh, Jesus, just walk beside me and help me to know that there's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Let those chains fall off. Let there be freedom. I proclaim freedom in Jesus' name. I need you. Some of you this morning, you need Jesus to help you break that addiction. He can do it. But you have to admit, you have to admit, I've got a problem and I need your help. Some of you are facing depression, but you've got to admit it. I'm facing depression. I need your help, Jesus. Some of you are facing worry, crazy worry, anxiety. You have to admit it. Some of you are dealing with sins. These sins that thus so easily, they're just easily besetting you. Little foxes that spoil the vine. Little things that come up. Some of you deal with anger. Some of you deal with jealousy. Some of you deal with envy. Some of us, we we deal with things that are just little things here and there. And we've tried to, tried to, tried to, tried to get it under control ourselves. And it just can't happen. There's not enough, I want you to hear me, church. There is not enough willpower. You can have a billion megawatts of willpower. You can be the most willful person in this world, but your willpower is not enough to break the weights and chains that easily beset you. It takes calling out to Jesus. So one more time, the final time, lift up your hands and hearts. God, I give it to you again. It's all yours, Lord. I throw it on the altar. Like you tell me in the scripture, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. You told us in the Bible that we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. We've got somebody who's fighting for us, somebody who's doing the work for us. And I pray, God, as we exit this building, that you'd be with us, you walk with us. Help us to stand strong and confident in you, knowing that we've got the victory. We lay aside the weight of pretension. The weight of pretending. And we live honest lives before you, Jesus. Amen. 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 I'm just going to put it to you blunt. Nobody likes a fake person. God don't like it either. True and honest. Right before the Lord. Give it to Him. Let God know your heart. Have a talk with Jesus. He'll make it better. May the Lord bless you on this day. 
Go forth with God in victory and confidence with Him. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise in here as we leave this place. God bless us. Seal us until the day of redemption. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. I'll see you on Wednesday night. Don't forget our quarterly conference Wednesday. God bless.